F123 is fresh out and with that comes a new triple screen tutorial. Now unfortunately F123 still does not support native triple screens, but I'm going to show how you can achieve this. Now it is still possible, but there's a couple of tweaks that we need to do within the constraints of the system and I'm going to show you how to do this with both Nvidia and without Nvidia surround for those that lack an Nvidia graphics card or who simply don't wish to use it. We're also going to look at how to set up your triple monitors correctly, how to measure them, how to calculate your FOV, and then finally we're going to input all that data into F123 and then also optimize your HUD to get the best triple screen experience that we can possibly get for F123. Still with me? Good. Buckle up, let's go. Now, just to make you aware, there will be some repetition from my other triple screen setup videos, as I wanted all of these instructional videos to be a one-stop shop. So if you don't need a section, please skip ahead using the chapter markers below. Setting up NVIDIA Surround. As stated previously, F123 still does not support native triple screens, but there are a couple of workarounds. We're going to be touching on NVIDIA Surround. I'll show you how to set that up. And if you don't wish to use this, you can also alter the settings file, although that is a little technical and you may not wish to use this. You can also use AMD iFinity, but unfortunately I don't have an AMD graphics card, so I won't be able to demonstrate that. First, you are going to want to go to the Start menu and open up NVIDIA Control Panel. Here, you are going to want to click on Configure Surround, select Span Displays with Surround, and then hit Configure. This will open the Setup Surround window, and at this point you must note the order of your screens. Here they are displayed in large white numbers. Working from left to right, they are numbered 2, 3, and 1. Now click Enable Surround. The screens will go black while this enables. At this point, drag the monitors in the display window into the correct order you noted before, 2, 3, and 1. Now click Apply to order the screens correctly. Now we need to correct the alignment for the bezels, and this is done with these two figures. This is done visually from where you will sit, so increase the numbers until it looks correct. For me, this number sits at 44. Once this is set, click Apply again. The screen will once again go black as this sets. Now go to the Resolution menu and select Bezel Corrected Resolution. Make a note of this now. Once selected, click Apply again, and then Surround with Bezel Corrected Resolution will be enabled. Setting up without NVIDIA Surround or AMD iFinity. Personally, I think NVIDIA Surround is the easier option of the two, but if you really don't want to use it, there is a workaround. First, you want to head to this PC and locate your Documents folder. Within here, locate the My Games folder. Here, you want to locate the F123 folder. Within this folder, you want to locate the file Hardware Settings Config. Right-click this and then open it with Notepad. Once open, you'll be met by this screen. Now, we are particularly interested in the resolution, width, and height, as you can see here. Now, I've already pre-filled this, but what I've done is taken the existing width of my sing single monitor, which is 2560, and multiplied that by 3, getting 7680. I've inputted the height, which is the standard height of my monitor, which is 1440p. And my display mode I've set to 0. Now, this is windowed bordered. Now, if you put 1, it's windowed borderless, and if you put 2, it's full screen. Now, for some reason, if you put 1 or 2, it doesn't work, so you've got to put 0 here. The last thing is window position. Now, traditionally speaking, you will have a Windows title bar at the top, which is 32 pixels. Now, I tried putting an offset of minus 32, but that left the pixels length along the bottom, so it has to be minus 31. Now, for some reason, it launched the Windows in exactly the right position, but they were offset slightly, so I had to play around with my x-axis position, which is moving the windows to the total left and right as a singular unit, and ultimately I arrived at the figure of minus 8. Now, depending on your monitor setup, this might be different for you, so you're going to have to play around with this, entering and exiting the game to see what works exactly. Personally, I think it's a lot easier to just use Nvidia Surround, but this does allow you to do it. Anyway, let's move on to the next section. Calculating the correct field of view, FOV. To calculate this, we are going to need some help from a free online tool available at this address. I will put the link in the description below. Once opened, you will be presented with this window. Here, you can adjust your parameters to obtain your desired field of view. 
For me, I wanted to make sure that all of my peripheral vision was covered, so I aimed for 180 degrees. Firstly, make sure your screen size is set to 16.9, and then input your screen size, minus 32 inches. Select triple screens from the drop down menu. You will then need to input your bezel thickness. I'll show you how to measure this later in the video. You can then play around with your distance from the screen and see the required monitor angle to achieve your desired FOV. In my case, I felt that a 60 degree angle would work well with my room and a distance of 62 centimeters away from the monitor felt comfortable. But you can play around with these figures as you desire, but once selected, you must stick to them. To better understand this, let's look at this on a diagram. To achieve a 180 degree field of vision, my eye line needs to be in line with the most proximal edge of the monitor, the circle here illustrating my head. My screen size is 32 inches, adjust this for your own size. The distance from screen is the distance from my eyes to the panel monitor. To achieve my required field of vision, I need to be 62 centimeters away, give or take. And finally, I must make sure that my triple screen angle is set to 60 degrees. This angle will differ for yourself depending on what you got in the tool. Here the angle is taken from a line drawn from the back of the middle monitor to the angle formed by the back of the left and right monitor. Here this is written in pink. To measure this practically, you will need a digital angle measure, or in this case a set square that has an angle measurer on it. Make sure this is lined up with the middle of the monitor when viewed from the top as illustrated here. Repeat this for the left and right monitor and be as accurate as possible. How to measure your monitors. Measuring up is relatively easy and we need to take two further measurements. Firstly, we need to measure the monitor's total width. Finally, you want to measure your bezel's width. This is the distance from the outermost portion of the monitor to the start of the image on your monitor. Here, mine measured 0.7 centimeters. How to optimize F1 23 for triple monitors. First thing, you're gonna to want to head to the settings menu. Here we have the main menu and you click on options. From here, you click settings. From here, you want to head to graphics settings. Now here we want to check that steering animation is off. Personally, I prefer that because it adds a little bit more immersion. And then you want to head to video mode. Once in here, you want to double check your resolution. Now here you can see my bezel corrected resolution, which is 7768 by 1440. If using the non-NVIDIA technique, this will read 7680 by 1440. You'll notice that I put display mode to windowed borderless. Personally, I prefer this because I like to exit in and out of the game at ease. Next up, we're going to optimize our FOV and heads up display. Now, first you want to enter a race of any kind and head to settings. Then you want to head to camera customization. From here, you want to make sure your camera is set to cockpit because really that's the only way you should be playing. And you want to set your field of view to its narrowest setting of minus 20. Then you want to set your horizontal offset to push yourself as far back as possible to minus 20. Now for me, I felt this gave me the best field of view and I had a good sense of speed, but ultimately if you don't like this, you can tweak this to your own specifications, but it's a good starting point. To adjust the heads up display, you want to go to settings again and then on screen display. Here we're gonna be able to take all the little bits and pieces that appear on your screen, giving you information and move them around to adjust for your triple screen setup. Now, irritatingly, this doesn't support mouse support. Seriously, sort it out. But what you're gonna to need to do is use the F keys to cycle through the bits you want to move Use the arrow keys to move them around and then press enter when you're happy with their position. Now you'll notice you'll have to do this for each different layout. It doesn't do it across the board. So you have to do it for race, time trial, practice, etc. But ultimately you can get it exactly where you want things. So hopefully if things have gone all swimmingly, you should now have gone from this to this. Enjoy F123. Enjoy your triple screen setup. If this helped you out, let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button if you liked it, and consider hitting that subscribe button. Until next time, take it easy, look after yourselves, bye for now.